uh, I'm telling you what a predicament I am in. I'm like meditating on everything that was shared and talked about by the panel that just came before us. And I feel like I need another hour to do that. But now I have to compose myself and uh, give this very short talk. So thanks for the opportunity. And hello all, I wanna start with saying that it is a delight for me to speak at this conference. It is always a pleasure to share my testimony with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, the people who have come before me, as you have noticed, and are coming after me, uh, have so much more wisdom and practical advice on all matters you're hoping to discuss and understand here. So my objective here is not to be redundant in that order. Rather, I was asked by the organizers of this conference to share some personal lessons, some personal uh, stories that the Lord showed me uh, in the scriptures and later in, through, in and through practical ministry as I spent over four years founding and leading VMware Christian Fellowship. And to do that, I want to ground our time today in two passages in the scripture, scriptures, which are part of the four great commission passages from each of the gospels. First, from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, where Jesus commands his disciples to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Next, from, gospel, from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, and Jesus said to them, all authority in heaven, heaven and, earth, and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. These are very familiar passages to all of us. And from Mark's gospel, we see that Jesus' primary and explicit command in the Great Commission is to proclaim the gospel. But now, this is where I was in 2013, 2015. Just came out of college, uh, new college grad, as it, we are referred to here in the Bay Area. I was part of a church, and I was part of a life for fellowship. And within that comfort circle, I was this very courageous uh, too bold a uh, person who had no trouble discussing his faith or opening the Bible uh, to pursue valuable truths. But then you saw me at work, and when it came to matters of faith, you would witness a church mouse, uh, even in one-on-one -on -one situations where the Lord showed me clear windows of opportunity to engage, I often stayed quiet. But the more time I spent in the scriptures, the more I realized that this was indeed a disobedience in my life. You know, while Paul tells the Corinthians that I have decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I, in contrast, never wanted to engage with or in Jesus when outside my spiritual comfort circle. And when the great apostle again reminds us in Romans that I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, I was extremely cautious and conflicted about coming out as a Christian in my workplace. So the first few years out of college, I lived this dichotomy. The word of God continued to remind me that I'm placed in this world, uh, in the workplace or the marketplace to be an ambassador of the gospel. And being a conduit for the gospel was not an optional term for the Christian. It was a required course. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I, uh, that, that, that it was easy to do that, or that I, I changed at the turn of a dime and I became this courageous sharer of the gospel. I wish that was true because I still struggle. But, but while attempting to be a good citizen at work, now I know it is only obedience that will help me to be receptive to God's call to share as he opens doors and opportunities. I remember once sharing uh, the gospel with the higher up. Uh, this person not only had much decision-making power over my career, but also was my mentor. Um, and when the Lord presented opportunities to share the gospel to her, my response was obedience, totally by the grace of God, because I have disobeyed many times before. And as I shared the good news of Jesus Christ, that only he was the path to God, somewhere in the back of my mind, I had this voice telling me, this is it. Everything is going to change after this. No more promotions and no more cool projects to work on. And, and guess who goes out the next time there are redundancies? Me. But by the grace of God, the direction of the Holy Spirit persisted. And not only was I not thrown out of my job and 
not only has God continued to bless me with great opportunities in the same team, but much more importantly, well, in fact, actually much more miraculously, this coworker whom I had the pleasure to share the gospel with has become a great family friend with me and my wife. And whenever they have a need in their life or a pressing matter, we are so often surprised to find ourselves at the receiving end of a call, seeking prayers and spiritual counsel. So if you learn anything from my stubborn self, let, this, let it be this. Yield to the Holy Spirit's direction regarding the sharing of the good news. He will show you people and opportunities. And when he shows them to you, share the gospel faithfully. Lay aside any concerns for the consequences because we trust that the Lord is in charge of our life and our ways. And you never know, you might soon have a relationship at work where people call you for prayers and counsel. Wouldn't that be awesome? So I think I have labored that point enough. So I would like to move on to the second aspect of the biblical great commission, which is discipleship. And you might say, rightly so, Rijo, I understand discipleship, but isn't that the domain of the church? And you're mostly right. It is the duty of the church to make disciples and to teach them to obey all that Jesus has commanded. But at the same time, I don't think I have to remind you that the church is not a physical location or a physical building or an organization. The church is the body of Christ, and we are members of this body. Hence, where we are, there are the churches. And we are definitely in our workplaces. Even now, in the midst of this raging pandemic, we are present in our workplaces, making an impact in the life of our isolated coworkers. And this is why. The call to teach them to obey all Jesus has commanded is extremely important even today. And this is why I love it when I see workplace fellowships that read the word of God and pray together regularly, because that is discipleship. Now, imagine uh, you could put a large sign at your workplace, uh, maybe in a common area or in the kitchen. And this, this sign said, the gospel transforms lives. Now, I know most of us can never do that. Uh, well, I can tell you from experience that a workplace fellowship that reads the Bible together, worships together, and prays together consistently will do the work of that sign for you that you can never put up at your workplace. So this is a lesson I have learned from being engaged with VMware Christian Fellowship. God's greatest desire is to prepare a remnant that finds its joy and satisfaction in him. And a discipleship community is the greatest expression of this desire of God at a corporate level in your workplaces. It is a large neon signs that points to Jesus's transformative work in the life of his disciples. So value your workplace fellowship, engage with it and love it. Um, Moving on, the final aspect of the Grace Commission I would like to engage with is Christ's pronouncement in the end uh, of the Great Commission, where he says, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Now, I think our mistake here would be taking this pronouncement in isolation, because I see it as connected to the earlier pronouncement as he begins his rendition of the Great Commission, when he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. If you put these two pronouncements of Jesus together, uh, what is he trying to tell us? I think Jesus is trying to tell us here that before you go into the meat of what it means to obey the Great Commission, remember that I am the all-powerful, all-sovereign God. And as you engage in this obedience to go make disciples, remember, I'm with you. I have a relationship with you. I'm your God your savior, your friend, and your counselor. So it is so interesting that the Great Commission is sandwiched within a reminder from Jesus that we are not doing this alone. We are doing this while remaining in an intimate and fruitful relationship with Jesus Christ. There are at least three lessons for me here, and I hope it makes sense uh, for all of you. I hope it, it, it makes an impact on all of you. Lesson number one, since the call to obey the commission exists within the call to a relationship, I believe that all endeavors and efforts to preach the gospel and make disciples should first and foremost happen on our knees. Prayer is our hotline to God. 
prayer is the foundation of our relationship with God. A prayerless life will be most futile if it is spent in the preaching and teaching of the word of God. I speak of it from personal experience, so please avoid my mistakes. Lesson number two, in prayer, like the Lord did with his apostles, like he did with Paul and like he did with Peter, God will tell us when to speak, where to speak, and what to speak. The Bible shows that this is where we get solid counsel from God on all these matters. So be in prayer so that the Lord will prepare the way ahead for you. Pray by name for each and every person you interact with at your workplace so that the Lord shows you the time and the place and the opportunities to help them have an encounter with Jesus on the cross. And third and final and probably the most obvious lesson here for us is three simple words, do not fear. It is the most repeated command in the scriptures. And when Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, we should hear, do not fear. And I think some of the panelists before us shared that, that fear can stop us from being faithful to God's call. But if we trust that he has authority in heaven and on earth, so he has authority over our managers, over our leaders, over companies, over board of directors, and we should be hearing that as do not fear. I pray blessings over all of you. Thanks for the opportunity. God bless and have a good rest of the conference.